Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Cheeseboy628 here today giving you an OU tier Pokemon Showdown battle. And this is actually the first OU team that I brought you guys on this channel. So it has been a while, so I'll give a little brief analysis about it. So I've got a special kind of Kiram Black set here. I made it rather defensive and mixed. I actually give it a minus speed nature so I could put some more defense EVs in it. So it can definitely take more hits. And then it has Roost and Fusion Bolt and Draco Meteor and Ice Beam. Then I have my special wall slash spin blocker, Jellicent. I have a specially defensive Ferrothorn, which also has Stealth Rock and Spikes, Leech Seed, and Gyro Ball. Then I have my physically defensive Dawn Fan, which is also my spinner. Then I have my Scarfed Landorus T, which is really for scouting purposes, and then I hit a nice, mean Earthquake in there every now and then. Then I have Super Power for Steel types, especially Ferrothorn, and I have Return as my final move, as it provides some more good coverage. Then finally, I have an Offensive Heatran with max speed, max special attack, and it has Substitute, and then Fire Blast, Dragon Pulse, and Earth Power, which I really like that set. It definitely works for Heatran. This, like I said, it is an older team, so it's a little bit outdated, but it does kind of work still. I think it is still rather effective, and it's definitely effective in this battle, as the first thing the guy said when he saw my team was like, ah, I'm like, what's going on? He's like, uh, your team looks scary, or something like that. Because, well, I'll tell you why in a little bit later. Now looking at his team... Infernape and Rotom Wash will definitely be rather intimidating pokes that can also scout my entire team out. Then he has Latios, which is definitely going to do some hefty damage. And then Gliscor is just going to be very annoying to take down if I only have physical attackers left. So other than that, though, I'm not too worried about Gyarados or Jirachi, as I have plenty of pokes to take them on. So yeah, let's see how this goes. So I start off my Lando to scout, and he has his Rotom Wash, and I just realized now that I have an adamant Lando, so not having Jolly could have been a bit risky when I face these kind of Rotom Wash situations, but I'm alright in this situation, luckily. So yeah, I go out to Ferrothorn, and he tricks me the Scarf, which definitely ruins my Ferrothorn, but I am able to get up my rocks, and I did notice he doesn't have a spinner, so getting up hazards is definitely going to be important. He brings in Infernape, which I just go for the Intimidate from Lando, and he just scouts with the U-turn. So now he brings in Gliscor, and my Lando cannot touch this Gliscor. The only Lando that could would have HP Ice. But yeah, nonetheless, I bring in Ferrothorn, and I take the Toxic, of course, and so I just take this opportunity to set up a layer of spikes. He brings in Jirachi, which is kind of weird. I'm not fearing the Fire Punch, so I'm just going to go for another layer of spikes. He brings in Infernape, and I predict the Fire-type move because last time I just went for U-Turn, but then I disregarded the fact that he had Life Orb and he wasn't choiced. So I went for Substitute, but yeah, he's not choiced, so the Close Combat easily takes me out. So now I bring in Lando to threaten him out, and I just go for the return in case he brings in something that's immune to Earthquake. And I still wanted to get some damage in, so that's why I went for the return. Now I brought in Ferrothorn, but I kind of was just like, oh, I'll sack it here. If he overpredicts, he overpredicts, and maybe I could get an extra layer of spikes. But he just goes for the overheat. No big deal. Now it goes for the Mach Punch, here's his final move, gets a crit, no big deal. And I just go for the U-turn, just in case he wants to save his death fodder. I bring in my Kirin Black to see what he'll bring in, and since he brought in Latios, it must be Scarfed, as he probably assumed that my Kirin B was Scarfed. But it actually just has leftovers. So, my Jellicent comes in to take the Draco Meteor fairly nicely, and I just go for the Skull to do some damage. If he stayed in to go for the Draco Meteor, then that's whatever since I could just recover it all off. So now he goes out to Jirachi, and that's a bit of a misplay as he was over predicting too much and I just got a nice chunk off with the Scald. Uh, now he goes into Rotom Wash once again to take the Scald, but this time he gets burned, and so that definitely lowers his survivability. This is basically his last chance in here. 
So he goes for the middle ground here this time to go for the HP Ice. And so I'm just going to keep recovering off no matter what he goes for. He finally goes for the Volt Switch here and since he's more of an offensive Rotom, that definitely does a nice chunk but I just recovered that all off. And I'm not worried about this Latios here, but then it gets a little haxy. He hits the Thunder, it paralyzes me, and yeah, I get paralyzed on the same turn. So here I probably should have went for the recover, definitely should have. But yeah, because he sacks his Rotom here to see what I would do. Now I'm definitely recovering here, but I get paralyzed. So I try to recover again. He missed the Draco, but I got paralyzed. And so therefore he's able to hit me with the Draco and finish me off. So now I come in with Lander's T. And since he's at such low special attack, I don't think he's going to stay in. So I just go for the U-turn to get some momentum. And so, I do go in my Don fan now, actually. And since he brings in Gyarados, this gives me the opportunity to go into my Kirim B. And he goes for the DD, but since my Kirim is very defensive, I'll take anything he has. Even though that was a crit Ice Fang. Which was Life Orb as well. So I go for the Fusion Bowl, which easily takes out the Gyarados. And he brings in Latios. So I know I need Kirim B to go for the Ice Beam on Gliscor. So that's why I bring in Don fan as I can just go for an Ice Shard or anything of the sort. So now Gliscor comes in, takes the Ice Shard beautifully, and I take this opportunity to go into Lando, as just in case if he goes for the Toxic, I don't want my Kirin B to take any unnecessary residual damage. So now since I think he's gonna protect here, I go into my Kirin B, and I don't want to roost here because I'm pretty sure he's going to Toxic, so I go for the Ice Beam, and it takes out the Gliscor, now all that's left is Latios, and he has to lock himself into one move, and he chooses Surf as he doesn't have Dragon Pulse. So I just finish him off with the Ice Beam, and that was the game. So that was an awesome battle, Nico. Alright guys, thanks for watching as always. So like I was saying in the beginning of the battle analysis, uh, the reason he was scared of my team is because... He actually comes from competitive 4th gen, so he doesn't really know about the pokes slash sets of 5th gen. So, if you did notice, yeah, he definitely had a 4th gen oriented team. He definitely played really well, it's just that there's so many things that came in to 5th gen that he wasn't exactly prepared for it. But nonetheless, it was definitely an awesome battle. So yeah, thanks for watching as always guys, I'm finally back on schedule getting that daily upload now. Hopefully I won't fall behind again. Thanks for staying with me. Like, comment, sub, and until later, peace.